So we're going to get started now. Our next speaker is Pedro Duarte, and he's going to talk to us about regularity of the Lyapunov exponents of random SL2R cycles. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, I would like first to thank the organizers for the invitation. It's a big pleasure and honor for me to be here. And then I would also like to express my gratitude to Marcelo for all the positive influence you had uh, in my uh, scientific career. Okay, just, uh, 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 I arrived here at TIMP uh, uh, in 89 to do my PhD in geometry, not in dynamical systems. And I went straight to the academic department, talked with Dona Noemi, and she introduced me the Portuguese PhD students of, of uh, Jaco and uh, Jaco Paulis and Marcel Viana. One of them was Marcelo. And well, they were, I think I could n never expect a better reception than uh, uh, as the one I had here. And uh, then they talked me, th th they, they, they told me they were studying dynamical systems, something I'd never studied. I was very sure, very confident I would like to, to do geometry. And then I think it was you. That, okay, before that, I was so enthusiastic about dynamical systems that I said, okay, I will choose dynamical systems as my second area. I think it was you that said it will not work. That, uh, uh, and, uh, but so I did. I chose uh, geometry as my first area, dynamical systems systems as my second area, and I got engaged in informal seminars on both areas. And eventually, after one year, I decided to change, so you were right. And okay, my, uh, uh, the influence, you can see it also in the title of, of my talk, which is a, a field where Marcelo has uh, uh, great contributions, but also in the, in the list of uh, co-authors. So, Jamerson Bezerra and Catalina Frejo, 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 they are, I think, the last students, your last PhD students. Okay. Uh, okay, the others are Outai, Uzir, and Silvius Klein, who spoke yesterday. And I will talk about joint work with them. So, the first slides is something everyone knows, but it's just to set up the notation, the language. Uh, uh, so I will talk about linear cycles. We have a uh, uh, compact metric space, uh, an ergodic homeomorphism, preserving some ergodic measure, and a continuous uh, uh, matrix valued function with values on, L2 and on SL2. And this determines what is called a bundle map or a linear cycle. People usually also call linear cycle to the matrix valued function. And then the dynamics, the iterates of this bundle map, they have this usual form where I'm using this notation for the fiber iterates. So it, this is just the product of the matrix valued function along a piece of the orbit of the base dynamics. And then the interesting thing is to study the Lyapunov exponent. I will not try to tell you what a Lyapunov exponent is. Everyone knows. But uh, uh, an interesting question, if you consider cocycles as continuous, matrix valued functions is to ask about the continuity of this function. And the answer is negative, so this is, is in general not continuous. This comes uh, from a work from Jairo Bocchi, another student of Marcelo, in the early uh, 2000s, that there is this dichotomy. So this, uh, uh, the only chance for this function to be continuous is that either the Lyapunov exponent is zero or else the cycle is uniformly hyperbolic. Actually, this result corresponds to a, a, a statement that was announced by Ricardo Magné, uh, uh, the time I was here at IMPA, and the result was that if you consider surface diffeomorphisms on a, on a compact surface, then uh, if your diffeomorphism is non-uniformly hyperbolic, that is, if it's not uniformly hyperbolic, but the Lyapunov exponents are positive, then you can perturb the, the diffeomorphism in the C1 topology to zero the Lyapunov exponents. Okay, this is nowadays called uh, uh, the uh, uh, magnes bocchi dichotomy. Unfortunately, uh, Ricardo uh, 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 is no longer with us, so his work 
which was never published, was eventually completed by Jairo Bocchi. And this is one of the consequences of, the, of this theory. Uh, I, will, uh, I will not talk about epiomorphisms, but only linear cocycles, but this is one of the consequences of this work. Then, uh, 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 so we need to take a smaller space of cocycles if one wishes to, to have continuity of the Lyapunov exponent. So assume you already know what a space is. Then the kind of question I want to address is, uh, uh, so I, I want to address the problem of studying uh, quantita uh, uh, qu quantitative, quantitatively, so a models of continuity of the Lyapunov exponent. And the question is, how is these uh, 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 models of, con how can these models of continuity be influenced? By influenced, I mean be limited, sorry. By limited, I mean negatively affected by some dynamical properties of the linear cocycle. There are many results that go on the opposite direction where having some dynamical properties of the linear cocycle, they imply a, 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 a positive, they have a positive influence on the regularity of the Lyapunov exponent. One of the oldest results is this uh, classical result of David Ruel, which in this particular setting says that if the cocycle is uniformly hyperbolic, then the Lyapunov exponents are analytic. There are many other results where the, so this establishes a relation between a dynamical property of the cocycle and the positive relation with the regularity of the linear cocycle. Okay, I will focus most of, uh, 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 most of my talk on an even more specific class of linear cocycles, that of random linear cocycles. So a random linear cocycle, the setting is the same, but now I assume the base dynamics corresponds to a, a, a Bernoulli shift in finitely many symbols. The measure is a Bernoulli measure, so it's given by a probability vector, and the matrix valued function is locally constant. By locally constant, I mean it's constant on every, si on every size one cylinder in the space of sequences. So this means that there is a finite number of K, mat there, there are K matrices in SL2, such that the expression of the cocycle depends only on the zeroth coordinate on the sequence. So this is locally constant. And this is a very well developed, the theory of the, the linear, the Lyapunov exponent and the regularity, this is perhaps one of the most uh, uh, well understood classes of linear cocycles and uh, the regularity of the Lyapunov exponent of the linear cocycles. Fundamental concept is that of stationary measure. Stationary measure for a random linear cocycle is a measure on the projective space so SL2 matrices, they act on the, on, on the projective space. And this measure as the asymptotic distribution of the random walks that, uh, that the linear cocycle generate on the projective space. So you fix a point and then you use the dynamics of the linear cocycle to generate a random walk. The asymptotic distribution is called a stationary measure. Okay, this is a short uh, review, it's by no means complete of uh, what is known uh, uh, about random uh, linear cocycles regarding only the, the problem of continuity. There are many other problems like simplicity, positivity. You see that in these slides, uh, the name Vienna appears several times. Uh, uh, well, in other problems like simplicity or, or positivity, it appears even uh, much more time. So uh, Marcel has many uh, uh, fundamental contributions in this theory, but let me just very briefly describe the, the main results. So maybe the, the starting of this theory is a couple of papers from the early 60s of Furstenberg, where he established something which is now called the Furstenberg formula that expresses the Lyapunov exponent as an integral in terms of the stationary measure. And uh, uh, then a bit later, uh, uh, okay, he also gave a criteria for positivity of the Lyapunov exponent. If the cocycle is strongly reducible and non-compact, then the Lyapunov exponent is positive. Okay, uh, uh, then uh, uh, actually extending this uh, uh, early result of Furstenberg's theory 
to a much more wider in general uh, 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 context where you have hyperbolic dynamics on the basis. This is one of the main contributions of Jano with many of his co-authors, going from Avila to, to Christian Bonetti and others, which is nowadays called the invariance principle. But I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to focus on the, on the continuity problem. So then next in 83, there was a result by Furstenberg and Yuri Kiefer regarding the continuity of the Lyapunov exponent. This is a, a relatively simple result because it uses the Furstenberg formula. Once you know that, uh, so the, the, you need a generic assumption which is some sort of irreducibility. Actually, technically what they use is something called quasi-reducibility. But if you have irreducibility, essentially uh, the stationary measure is unique and then the Furstenberg formula gives you continuity. So this is not uh, such a difficult theorem to prove. But then in 89, Emile Lepage proved something stronger. He used spectral theory approaches using so-called Markov operator. And using this technology, he was able to prove that if one adds this irreducibility assumption of the previous result, another assumption that there exists a gap between the first and second Lyapunov exponent, then the continuity of the first Lyapunov exponent is older. We have older continuity. Okay, uh, the next result I have here is an example that appeared in the context of mathematical physics uh, due to uh, uh, Alperin. Alperin uh, 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 and this is actually a, a negative result. It's an example where something which in mathematical physics in the study of the spectral theory of Schrodinger operators is called the integrated density of states. It showed that this integrated density of states can be much lower. I, actually, it needs to be older, but it can be older with a very small exponent. It happens that this is by a more recent result. This relates with the continuity of the Lyapunov exponent. I will explain this connection in the next slide, so let me be a bit more brief. But combining this old result of Alpera with the more recent result, we see that the result of Lepage is actually a very common one. So there are examples where the regularity of the Lyapunov exponent is not better than older, it's older with a very low, can be only older with a very low Lyapunov exponent. Then, uh, uh, I don't know if this is the, the, the right date of result. There is this work of uh, Marcelo with his student, Carlos Boccarneto, that I think took some time to be published, which is in, in inversional uh, uh, proportional to the impact that this result had because this is a very, very cited result where here they proved that in this context of GL2 cycles, the Lyapunov exponent is always continuous. You don't need any generic assumption. It's always continuous. Moreover, they proved that this is for the that class of cycles that I mentioned, so locally constant cycles. If you try to extend this to a larger class, like older continuous cycles, there are contraexamples. So the Lyapunov exponent can be discontinuous. And then there was a conjecture, a famous conjecture, that uh, if you consider even more general base dynamics, like hyperbolic or uniformly hyperbolic dynamics, but you impose a so-called fiber bunched condition, which is some sort of partially hyperbolic, in which the base dynamic dominates the fiber dynamics, then the Lyapunov exponent should be continuous. And this was if proven recently to be true by Lukas Bakis, who's, who's here, another student of Marcelo, and by Aaron Brown and Clark Butler in, in, in these years. So uh, then I have to mention these results uh, that has been announced for a couple of years, which I hope to be uh, ready and available for the benefit of the community soon. So, uh, Marcelo, I've attended a, a talk of Marcelo in Salvador, and you mentioned uh, uh, recent improvements, improvements in this work, so I hope this can be finished soon. Finally, the last results, they, are, they tell us a bit of what happens when the assumptions of Lepage fail. So, one is reducibility, the other assumption is a gap. So, when you don't have, well, if you don't have 
either, nor irreducibility nor a gap. And there is an example that I did with Klein and a former student of mine showing that the module, modules of continuum can really very, be very bad, much below older. And the other results, they tell us, uh, uh, well, there is a result of Toll in Vienna, of uh, Yaya Toll, another student of Marcelo, that uh, in general, you always have a minimum regularity, which is log older. And, uh, but I also say something in the, okay, maybe I don't want to go into detail. So these are, these are, if you don't have older continuity, then you, you still have some uh, uh, explicit module, moduli of continuity, so. But notice that between analytic and dollar continuity, there is not, nothing. So this is the, the, the. And now let me tell you a bit of Alperin, Alperin example. This was made rigorous by, in a paper, at least as far as I know, in a paper from 85 by Barry Simon and Taylor. And uh, I'm not going to talk about Schrodinger operators, uh, uh, but I will mention just as a curiosity uh, uh, several uh, uh, concepts from, uh, so in this example, what is proven is that the integrated density of state is not older. But the consequences for uh, linear co-cycles is, is the following. If you consider this random co-cycle, it's, it's a family, a one-parameter family, generated by these two SL2 matrices, and you consider a probability vector, doesn't need to be this one, then the Lyapunov exponent cannot be alpha older continue for any alpha bigger than this. Notice that when A and B, they go apart, so the denominator in this expression goes to infinity, and so this ratio is arbitrarily close to zero. So this shows that there are examples where the regularity of the Lyapunov exponent is older by uh, Lepage. It, it, this, this example always satisfies, satisfies the assumptions of Emil Lepage, but the older exponent can be really, really very bad. Okay, to prove this, the, the, the proof of this is based on a, a, a famous formula in mathematical physics known as the Thales formula. Uh, David Thales was a Scottish uh, mathematician and, uh, uh, well, he was a Nobel laureate, but uh, uh, this formula that relates the Lyapunov exponent of the Schrodinger uh, 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 operator, uh, sorry, the Lyapunov exponent of the Schrodinger cycle associated to Sch Schrodinger operator relates this with, uh, with, uh, with this quantity which is called the integrated density of state. So this is the formal relation between these two concepts, Lyapunov exponent of the, Schrodinger, of the family of Schrodinger cycles and this quantity, which is the integrated density of states, which in some sense measures the denseness or the density of eigenvalues of the Schrodinger operator on the real line. So the operator is self-adjoint, so the spectrum is contained on the real line. And this is some sort of uh, Hilbert transform. If you integrate this by parts, you can see that this relation says that the Lyapunov exponent is an Hilbert transform of the integrated density of states. And then because the, in, the Hilbert transform as an inverse, which is basically the same operator, then it also follows that the integrated density of states is also an Hilbert transform of the Lyapunov exponent. Knowing this, uh, uh, William Schlag and uh, uh, Michael Goldstein proved in 2001 that certain moduli of continuity can be transferred via this type of Hilbert transform. So in particular, if you know that something is all the integrated density of states or, or the Lyapunov exponent is all continuous, then this uh, 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 moduli of continuity, these modules of continuity can be transferred to the other side. And this explains why proving that the integrated density of states cannot be older implies the same thing for the Lyapunov exponent. Okay, what I want to show, the main result I want to talk about today is basically an extension of, of this uh, example of Alperin. So I want to abstract this idea of Alperin and show you a result, a general result, that tells us when is this break in the regularity holds. For that, we need the same techniques, the same techniques. We need the Thales formula 
which is not available in, in general. So what I want to mention next is a, a, a recent result where we proved the dynamical version of the Talos, Talos formula. So we don't need any spectral, any Schrodinger operator. There is something very similar in the spirit of Talos formula, which is a purely dynamical formula. So the context is the following. You take a continuous family. So here you don't need randomness. The cycle does not need to be random. You take a continuous family of cycles. We need this assumption that uh, the, the, this is, a, we call it positive winding assumption. It means that if you take a vector, as you move the parameter, the image, under the, uh, the image of this vector under the cycle always rotates in the same direction. Okay, this does not need to be strict positive. So if you think of uh, 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 the uh, Schrodinger type family, so the cycle has this form. And in this case, it's very easy to do the computation and see that that, re that derivative is always non-negative. So this is always rotating in the same direction. Then we need another assumption, which is the affine form. We assume that the, the, this uh, cycle has this affine form, which is the case of the Schrodinger cycles, because you can write this as this in this form, plus t times something. This is a rank one cocycle. Well, this is a trivial cocycle. It's a constant rank one cocycle. But in our result, b could be anything. And then you could ask uh, if it makes sense, make, makes much sense to have uh, a family, if there are many families like that. And the answer is, is yes. And the reason is that if you look at SL2, it looks like this. So what I'm drawing here in the board is a, a one-leaf hyperboloid. So SL2 is a three-dimensional manifold which looks exactly like this. If you remember a bit of geometry in this example, through any point that you consider, you always have two lines that are completely contained, okay? If you, in our three-dimensional model, which is SL2, what one can see is that there is a cone, a surface, a conic surface, that it's always contained in there. And then in this conic surface, you can take many lines, and then if you choose the right way of, uh, of, tra tra of uh, 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 going along this line, you get automatically the positive winding condition. Okay, so there are many, this is very explicit, you, you, if you, you given any uh, cycle A, you can produce many examples uh, which satisfy this condition here. The third and last condition is that the cycle B, which is this part, so this is in the Schrodinger case, this cycle should have dominated splitting and positively up and exponent. So let me just make a short mention. The affine form of the cycle. We believe it's a technical assumption that could be uh, 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 discarded. Actually, we know what to do if instead of affine we have some polynomial dependence. The dominated splitting is also a technical assumption. The important thing is that the first Lyapunov exponent of this rank one cycle is finite. This is, and then the conclusion is that we, ha we have a Talos formula like this one where the Lyapunov exponent of the family is the Lyapunov exponent of the rank one, rank one cycle B, ti times some potential, which is expressed of this quantity, which is the so-called fibered rotation number. So let me tell you here what is the fibered rotation number. Fibered rotation number. It's defined like this. So if you have a cycle, say AT, then the fibered rotation number is the limit, as n goes to infinity, of 1 over n pi, and then you measure the angle between ATN of xv. You take any vector v. This is an oriented angle, so, uh, and this is a mu almost sure limit. And this holds for any v and for almost every x. Okay, if you want to be a bit more rigorous, you should take a lifting, so of this quantity, 
and then, then the, the vector becomes a real number, and then you measure in the lifting how much. And if the lifting is chosen so that the period one corresponds to covering the projective, you just have to divide by n. So this is a limit like this. Uh, as far as I know, the first time this uh, concept appeared was in a work of Michel Hermann, and this was, I think, in 83. And he, what, he did, what he proved there is that this fiber rotation number is always well defined in the sense that it does not depend on the liftings that you pick if your cycle is homotopic to a constant. Okay? Then, in, in, I think around 2012, there is a paper of Avila, of Bocchi, and Damanik where they use these ideas. It, I think it's always in this context that your uh, co-cycle or family of co-cycles is homotopic to a constant. And then there is another recent result which I need to mention, which is a result of Gorodetsky, Gorodetsky and Klepsin, uh, where they make the following of Klepsin, I think I'm uh, writing it well, of Viktor Klepsin, Klepsin and Anton Gorodetsky. This, this was published last year, 2021, where they make a, a, a crucial observation that if you, so in general, if your cycle is not homotopic to a constant, then this quantity depends on the choice of the liftings that you do. But if you do differences, so if you look at the Lebesgue still just measure of some interval, say t, t prime, meaning you do the difference between the rotation number at t prime and the rotation number at t, this number is independent of the choices of the liftings. Notice that once you do a lifting, say, for t equals 0, there is a natural way of having a, a, a liftings for all t. So if you, choose, uh, 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 if you choose liftings in this compatible way, this difference of rotation numbers is independent of the choices. So this is a truly intrinsic concept. And what you can see here is an integral with respect to this measure that I'm mentioning here. So this is a dynamical Talas formula. And because of this formula, if one wants to prove that the Lyapunov exponent is not alpha or continuous, all we need to do is, that, is to see that the rotation number is not alpha or continuous. OK, let me now tell you the result, our main result. Uh, it's the following. If you take, now I'm back to the random, to the world of random linear cycles. So we have a one parameter family of random linear cycles, which is positively winding. Now I'm assuming the winding is strictly positive. This, for instance, in the Schrodinger world, you, it, you take n equal 2. After 2 iterates, the winding becomes strict. You have a strict winding. This is something what actually uh, Gorodetsky and Klepsin, they have a very interesting result that has no intersection with, with this, but it goes in the same direction. They are studying, they have, uh, the, the work is called Furstenberg type formula. Well, I don't remember the exact name, name of the paper, but they basically are interested. Their question is if you have a, a monotonic or positively winding family as that, they are interested to, to know what happens to this limit, but for all t. And what they prove is that the limb soup is always, for almost every point, is always the right one. But then there is, uh, so th what they prove is that, well, I, I don't have much time, but uh, never mind. Uh, uh, let me skip this. I'm, if you are interested, I can tell you in the end. Uh, Okay, uh, so let me talk about our result. So the assumptions are kind of the same, except that I'm, this is in the world of random linear cycles. And then the result is the following. If you take any number which is greater than the ratio between the uh, uh, metric entropy of the base dynamics, so we have an, uh, you have a Bernoulli shift on the base dynamics, this is the metric entropy over the Lyapunov exponent, if alpha is bigger than this, then the Lyapunov exponent cannot be zero. Otherwise, the ratio would be infinity. So then we have this dichotomy. Either A is uniformly, uniformly hyperbolic, and then the Lyapunov exponent is analytic in a neighborhood, 
or else the Lyapunov exponent cannot be alpha Walder continuous. So this gives us a, an upper bound on the older regularity of the cocycle. So if this ratio is less than one, we have an upper bound. An interesting question would be if something could be said in, in the cases where this ratio is greater than one. Because this is, these are the only cases where the regularity can, go, can become Lipschitz, something like, like Lipschitz or better. Otherwise, this result tells us that the regularity is always less than older. OK, uh, sorry. Ah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you say? Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, uh, okay, the honest answer would be, I don't know. I can tell you what I would expect, not what I know for sure. What I would expect is that there is an interval that uh, ends with there after which, with that ratio after which you don't have older continuity, but there is also a lower bound. Actually, we know explicit what that lower bound is. This comes from uh, uh, the proof of Lepage. But the thing is that that lower bound is not, uh, is a spectral quantity. We have an idea of what should be a, a, a more dynamical quantity that represents that initial threshold. But my idea, our idea is that we should always have some threshold which ends at that ratio and uh, uh, but begin somewhere, and then the, the regularity threshold should be somewhere in, in between. So I don't think there will be a quantity that holds for all cocycles that tells you, okay, this is the, the point where the, the, the regularity breaks. I think depending on the example, there should be a, a, an interval like this. Okay, uh, sorry for the spoiler. I have no more slides to present to you. I want to use the last minutes to give you an idea of the proof of, of, of this. So, uh, uh, first of all, this, uh, let me use this notation. So, this will be the, the forward and backward uh, uh, stationary measures, stationary measures. Uh, uh, by forward stationary measure, I mean the stationary measure in the usual sense. Backward, I mean the stationary measure for the inverse cocycle. So you in invert, reverse the cocycle. You have another stationary measure that I will be calling uh, uh, eta minus. These measures, we can define the dimension of this measure. So the dimension of a measure like this, uh, this is defined at, at some point. By definition, is the limit as r goes to zero of log of the measure eta plus or minus of a ball. This is a ball in the, in the, in the projective space divided by the log of the radius. And I will denote these, uh, 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 these dimensions by d plus or minus. And this limit exists mu almost, uh, uh, this, these limits exist for almost every point with respect to this measure. And this holds true if we know that this, uh, uh, the, the random linear cocycle is irreducible. This is something that was proven recently by Ockman and Solomyak. Solomyak. And based on uh, this, uh, I think this paper was from 2017. Uh, and it's based on an earlier work of uh, Le Drapier about uh, this type of, uh, about the dimension of this type of stationary measures. From their work, it follows also that the dimension of the uh, forward stationary measure plus the dimension of the backward stationary measure is always less or equal than the ratio that we have above. Okay, it's always less or equal than this. And they also give conditions to have equality. Uh, so this inequality is always true. The equality holds if we have two conditions. If the support of the stationary measure, uh, the, sorry, the support of the of the of the not the stationary measure of the original measure, so the the uh, this finite set, the matrices that define the 
if this finite set of matrices, the oftentimes, I, I don't have time to explain you what the oftentimes means. And if moreover, the semi-group or the group generated by this matrix is free, then with, in, in, with these conditions, we have equality, okay? Being free is a generic condition in a strong, in a measure theoretical sense. In that paper, they mentioned that uh, uh, someone else at least asked the question if being the oftentimes is also a generic condition in this measure of sense. Uh, uh, so I don't know if this is true or not, uh, but it's possible that this equality holds in, a, in some generic sense. Uh, our assumption is that alpha is bigger than this, uh, but actually the heuristic proof that I'm going to give you will, be a, uh, will, will not be a true proof because it's just an idea, but what I'm going to assume is that alpha is bigger than the sum of these two dimensions. Okay, there is a big difference. This is a very nice quantity because it's stable under perturbations. The Lyapunov exponent is, co is continuous. This is stable. The dependence of these dimensions on the underlying co-cycle is very uh, complicated, so this is not stable. So you see it's much easier. If you want to do a real proof, this is much uh, uh, easier to handle than this kind of quantity than this kind of inequality. So let me give you an idea of uh, why, the, why that uh, result holds. So first of all, we need to use a, a, a theory of Avila, of, uh, of Avila, Bocchi, and Yokos. Bocchi, Yokos. This was, I think, 2010. It, it's a theory about uh, uniformity where they characterize uniform hyperbolicity for random linear cycles. It's a bit more general, but let me not try to make any difference. So the idea is that if your random linear cycle is not uniformly hyperbolic, uniformly hyperbolic, then uh, uh, one of uh, two alternatives must hold. One possibility is that the semi-group generated by the co-cycle contains an elliptic matrix. So let me write simply, then A admits, one possibility it admits either an elliptic matrix. So there is a product of these matrices some product of these matrices that uh, uh, eventually becomes elliptic. And by elliptic, I will uh, uh, include the possibility of being parabolic or being the identity, plus or minus the identity. The second alternative is that uh, uh, it contains, admits either an elliptic uh, matrix or else a heteroclinic, heteroclinic tangency. They, they don't call it, I think they call it in that paper, heteroclinic connection. But the reason why I prefer, where, why we prefer to call it heteroclinic tangency, and the definition of heteroclinic tangency is that it's a configuration where the stable and the unstable Osler that's direction match. So if you have a random co-cycle and you look at these two directions, the unstable Osler that's direction, depends only on the past, while the stable depends only on the future. Because of this, these two directions are sort of independent of each other. Osledets tells us that these are directions are transversal almost everywhere. But you can have, if you don't have uniform, uniform hyperbolicity, you could have a matching. This occurs with zero uh, measure in a, in a set of zero measure points, but you can have, and we call these heteroclinic tangencies. Uh, okay, so you need to have one of these two alternatives. And then from this theory, it follows that if you assume that AT is positively winding, and you assume, say, that uh, A0 is not uniformly, is not uniformly hyperbolic, uh, uniformly hyperbolic, then you can take the same, the same is true, is true for many t close to zero. Uh, so what I'm saying here in, a very, rough, in very rough terms is that uh, uh, you will have arbitrarily close if your 
at t equals zero, you don't, you don't have uniform hyperbolicity, then for infinitely many t's arbitrarily close to zero, you will either have elliptic matrices or heteroclinic tangencies. You can have both. Okay, you don't need to, to have, there are situations where, where you only have uh, one of these elements, but you could have both. Okay, in particular, I will assume that we have an, an, we can assume by changing, because our assumption is robust, of course, it would not be robust if, if it would be like this, we can assume that uh, A naught admits an elliptic uh, rotation. It admits an elliptic element, which is irrational with an irrational rotation number, so I can assume it's a real rotation. Let me now move on to the idea of the proof. Uh, okay, five minutes. So th the idea of the proof is like this. So first, we need the concept of matching. What is a matching? So a matching is a configuration like this. This is the projective. You take two points, V plus and V minus. Uh, let me draw them. So you have a vector which is, a, say, a, a typical expanding direction of your linear cocycle. You take another vector, V minus, which is a typical uh, 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 direction for the Osledet's direction, the stable Osledet's direction. And then, uh, what we will call a matching is a time where we have a configuration like this. This will be a, a certain matrix, and this will be the, the following matrix, say ATN, FN, omega. Okay, and uh, to, be a, to be called a matching, this should occur, so a matching at a certain time T naught. If you have a configuration like this, where both these matrices have very, very large norm, and having very, very large norm means that the action on the projective of, of this matrix is very contractive. So the picture should be like this. And here it's very contractive if you go backwards. So this is the dynamical picture that you have for uh, 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 what we call a matching at time t naught. So this vector is going to be mapped to a very long vector here in the middle. So this is at time t naught. This map is, th this vector is mapped to this vector, like this, okay? And then in the same time n, this map comes here, t naught n fn omega, okay? And then there will be another direction here, which is going to expand it greatly here, okay? Because this matrix has a very large norm. If you look at this picture, now we know that at time t naught, this vector is mapped to this vector. So if you take a, a time slightly before t naught minus, so something slightly less than t naught, then the image will be like this. And because this map is strongly hyperbolic, its image will be somewhere here. And then if you do the same thing, but with another time slightly after t naught, you get a T naught plus, where the image, uh, uh, so after T naught, this is rotating in this direction, so the image will be a very long vector here. So you see, in a very small interval around T naught, this direction will rotate almost an angle pi, okay? They are almost uh, opposite, and then because we have the winding property, if I rotate it, if I let this, T naught this time go a bit further, then I will have a full turn around. So the dynamical consequence of a T of a matching at T naught is the following. Let me write it here. If uh, if uh, uh, so, a T a matching at T naught implies that a t 2n omega v plus gives one turn gives one turn around the projective space p1 as t varies in a small interval in a small interval 
around T naught. Okay, this is the important thing to bear in mind. And if you ask me about the size of this interval, it's connected with the, str the strength of this hyperbolicity. It's basically the inverse of the norm of this matrix or the square of the inverse of the norm of this. So there is a very small interval which is connected to how strong that hyperbolic matrix so that uh, you have one turnaround here. Next step is to have many, many, uh, uh, so I'm, uh, I'm seeing I'm over my time. Can I have one minute to, to, to so I will tell you, to finish, I'm, uh, I'm, I will only tell you how to produce uh, uh, many matchings. And then the end of the story, which I don't have time to tell you, would be that these many matchings, it's a very simple computation. They will give you the, the, the so matchings, because of this implication here, they can be translated to a variation of the fibered rotation number. Many matchings will cause a big variation on the fibered rotation number, and then this translates to a lack of regularity. The calculation is very simple, and then uh, you, we, we could use explicitly these dimensions. But let me just tell you how, how many matchings occur in this situation. So I will draw the projective space here. I need one more circle. So here I'm going to consider words of length n, words of length n. So I take an interval, a very small interval, E plus, another small interval, E minus. So these intervals will have a length, a very small length there, R. This will actually be exponentially small in this n. And then here it's V plus, and here it's V minus. And then I look at all words of length n. So I look at the random walks in the projective. So if I start at this point after n iterates, I will be somewhere here in the projective. With a small probability, I will reach a point inside. OK, so I have a certain random walk that brings me in. Then large deviation tells us that with almost no loss. We can assume that this long word is, uh, the norm is as large as it should. So it's basically given by the Lyapunov exponent. And this means that the projective action is very contractive. So we have a picture like this. Now, this is words. So there are many words that I can choose which have this kind of picture. Now I do the same, but coming backward. So there is a long word that if I come backward and zero, I can assume that the norm of this matrix is very large, and then the dynamics coming backward is very contractive. Okay, and this gives me a, a, a this is going, uh, okay. And then, I, of course, these intervals, they can be chosen so that there is an elliptic matrix of the co-cycle, say a rotation that brings one interval towards the other, okay? This is not giving us uh, a matching straightforward because this image may be mapped to another point, not this one. But then if we move the parameter, it's very easy to see that we can get matching. So there will be, this configuration implies a matching in a certain interval, which is of this size, about this size. So it's an interval, uh, exponentially small interval. In this exponentially small interval, I will have a matching. And now I can count how many matching, so many matching configurations I have of, of this form using the information that I have on the dimensions. Because roughly, if I want to count how many uh, configurations I have that end up in E plus, this is related with the dimension of the stationary measure. Uh, because, uh, okay, I think I've overcome my time, so I'm sorry. Uh, so let me stop here. Are there any questions or comments? So beyond the uniformly hyperbolic case, do you have some other examples when you have a smooth dependence on uh, parameters for the exponents? 
Uh, I think there is, but I need some help. Uh, I think there is a work of Burgan. Maybe Silvio can, me, can help me with that. Is, isn't there a work of Burgan where he proves a bit, uh, where he proves something uh, in this direction? No, I'm. Uh, translation on the torus, but... Uh, no, but in this setting of this random setting. setting. I, I'm, I don't remember. Okay, I, I think, think I well, do. this is an open problem, right? I'm confusing. This is uh, 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 the problem of uh, getting Lipschitz that uh, the Lyapunov exponents should be Lipschitz under... Yes, and he needs uh, the work of... Bulgarian but there is, is no setting. example. I thought there was a, a, an algebraic example. Your question was maybe about generic behavior, but my question was about just one example. Yeah, uh, uh, well, uh, I, maybe I'm wrong. I had the idea that there was an example of Burgan in this direction, which was a positive example that would answer, but maybe I'm confusing things. Let me just say something. I'm talking ab always about random cycles where the support of the measure is finite. If you consider more general measures, then there is, the, there is a result of Lepage. If the measure is uh, uh, absolutely continuous with respect to the R measure on the group, then the Lyapunov exponent is known to be C infinity. But this is a different world where the measures are finitely supported. No, you, you and Marcelo are right. Uh, there is this work of Burgan. Uh, yes. Basically, uh, they, they need a, he needs an algebraic condition, so it's not yes. a typical case. I believe that it's related to, uh, so this need for algebraic uh, is uh, the techniques that uh, have used it to, be pro to prove uh, spectral gaps in, uh, in random walks and so on. Uh, it is uh, w w what's being used here. So going beyond that, uh, and getting to typical things is completely open. I think it's a very okay. good question, but there is uh, examples at least, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Well, if not, let's thanks Pedro again. Thank you.